What's up, everybody? This is Carrick with ACG, and as always, it's my continuing mission to bring you reviews that aren't two minutes long or filled with sponsored bullcrap. Have you ever wanted to know what it was like to jump pack around mysterious canyons of an unknown world? Or how about throwing alien ovaries into packs of worker creatures so that they fight each other like they were at Wilford Brimley's house during a cockfight? Well, you can now, because Ubisoft has the DLC Lost on Mars for Far Cry 5 to sate those strange urges you may have. So now it's time to ship your ass to Mars via cow teleporter, slap your best friend into a robot help vehicle, and do your best to channel Starship Troopers and a Leslie Nielsen flick all at the same time. Lost on Mars is out Tuesday the 17th and can be bought via the season pass or single purchase for Far Cry 5. As always, if you like the video, eh, maybe subscribe. So here's my review for the Far Cry DLC, Lost on Mars, playing a space jerk, cruising with Herc, and laser gun and always fun in space-based mercs. Graphics are up first. It's good to go into the game knowing that, yes, it's Mars. It's not going to be known for its verdant forest stretching out into nothingness, pushing graphics cards to their max with their fill rate. Instead, Mars is known for rocks. Pretty rocks, though, and at times it does actually look good with a fairly drawn-out distance and some cool effects on weapons. But it is a far starker look than, say, Vietnam or Far Cry 5 itself, and can take a bit of getting used to for gamers, especially when we see competition like, say, the Prey DLC with more interesting and varied moon locations. It's surprising to me, honestly, to see how little the DLC ends up doing with this location. But that being said, two things do differentiate the details in Mars versus the prior game and its DLC, and that is, of course, weapons and creatures. Sadly, the weapons hinge more on the slick look of, let's say, Mass Effect weapons, and aside from some graphical adjustments for the beams or pulses themselves, most of the guns end up looking like they were all pressed from the same Gold Star VCR maker assembly line. The one particular standout is a shotgun, not necessarily for its look, but for its weapon use. It basically treats the entire world like your Luke inside the Death Star our trash compactor and firing that off inside any area is a hilarious moment of rebounding lasers pulsing throughout the air and killing everyone in a small radius. It also happens to be one of the few guns that adds strategy to the title, but I'll get to that in a second. I will say one thing that I was happy with overall was the creature design. Think armored space spiders wearing bulletproof armor and then run them through a crazy color generator and that's the normal enemies, but it's the absolutely abhorrent abomination that they call the queen alien that takes the cake here. And when they lean back and they start to race forward like some terrifying cartoon character hinging on these physics that aren't exactly Earth-like, it can work really well to make you nope the fuck out of whatever area that you're in right then. That being said, other than spitting at you or smashing the shit out of you with pinchers and flailing thingamajigs, they don't really do much else because spiders don't have arms, which I think is a positive fact we can all agree on. Second is the fact that the weapon variety and effects don't really do much. Getting a shotgun laser weapon and then buying its brother doesn't elicit much of any real change, and that could have been a good way to break up the overall feeling of sameness that Mars has throughout its entire length. Of course, the aforementioned amazing shotgun of Fantastic Lights Plus 5 I mentioned before is notwithstanding. Now, performance-wise, the game does run outstandingly well, and that's not surprising since much of the time you're playing in a desert planet's wasteland. It runs a bit better than the original game and has the exact same options as the original, which is nice as Far Cry 5 did have a pretty generous set of options for graphics, audio, and control. For console, you also get the exact same options as you had with the original titles. Overall, I have to say this, it's Mars. There's a reason why every time we see a rover pick from there, everyone responds in one collective indifferent shrug. Even in the fantastic elevated fantasy of Far Cry 5, it's not really that atmospheric, and I feel like they could have done a lot more, even with just small graphical effects. Sound, music, and voice. like that. I mean, I'll hang out with a nerd if he lets me ride his rocket. Wait, that sounded weird. And this time we're going to do music first. This is excellent. It's a heavy synth mix between, say, a John Carpenter score and the first time you figured out how to use Cakewalk in Ableton. It's heavy on the thick synth and it resounds with a number of tracks that harken almost to the sublime soundtrack I've talked about before, the 2D scroller Headlander, while being at the same time a bit more subdued, not overly calling attention to itself until there's a poignant moment that happens. But the standout here absolutely has to be Herc, playing his damn music out of his bot all the time. He has these one-liners about whatever's playing. Just consider him a floating jukebox with questionable AI and a more mysterious classics collection. It's a fantastic use of diegetic music as well, and it does a perfect job mending all of those elements together, even though in the end, when you look at them, they're pretty different. This is my kind of music for my kind of game, but it's not going to fit everybody. Sound. 
The impact of projectile weapons is mostly removed here, obviously, and it's replaced with that heavy electrical sound of a ray gun, a laser pistol, or an energy shotgun. There's nothing really great, and it's something that I think a lot of developers have had problems with in the past. How do you make a thick, interesting auditory moment when you're really just playing a game where you're basically throwing light at your enemies and pretending it hurts them like the world's worst laser tag game? It does work. There's some processing effects as well when you're in certain areas, but overall, just pretty much okay. And of course, that brings us to voice, and I absolutely loved it. It's not because the main character, Nick, does anything other than a fine job as a voice actor, but he doesn't really say that much. He's sort of an intergalactic version of the Rook in Far Cry 5, but with cooler shades. Here, though, it's absolutely because of Herc, the Herkmeister, the Herc man, who can make a joke about space jizz and losing his testicles in the same moment you find yourself just nodding along with him like you've been fast friends and you understand exactly where he's coming from. His constant stories about birthday parties gone wrong and his slightly uncomfortable attraction to the AI remind you of the folks who drew haunting Cortana art pics when Halo first released and you caught yourself mid-vomit as you clicked away as fast as you can. Except here, it's all with that Herc charm. This is an outstanding and often remarkable example of how voice can elevate a title, which we're going to talk about now as we go into gameplay and a bit about the story. So as we all remember, Far Cry 5 spent its time with you playing the Rook, Greyhound in your way through the backwater nirvana of high assault rifles and enough hallucinogenic drugs to make Joe Rogan say, whoa, hold up for a second. Here, you jump into the crazy pants of Nick, pilot extraordinary plenty potentiary as he warps off to Mars to pay back a promise he most likely regrets making to everyone's favorite NPC, Herc. How he gets there is a bit of an inside joke, especially if you did particular actions during Larry Parker's quests in Far Cry 5. And arriving on Mars, your job's fairly simple. Like a reverse William Wallace, Herc has been pulled apart, but it's your job to instead find his body parts, including, yes, his man boobs, as you trape across the unwelcoming landscape of Mars, and then glue them all back together. You're also there to help a mysterious AI system stop an alien invasion from making its way to Earth. But that's really sort of beside the point, because the narratives of these two are in direct opposites of one another. One being good, the other being absolutely, almost terrifyingly bad. With the Herc parts of the quest, you're consistently bombarded by stories he's telling you and a continuation of the Far Cry 5 dynamic, and it sets this hilarious crux into the game that works well to keep you moving around the very small area the DLC is based on and find those parts. You'll find his leg in one place is junk in another, and Herc isn't afraid to admit he doesn't want to talk about how that happened, or discuss the awkward realization that one of his arms is more well-defined and muscular than another. It is classic when it comes to those parts. Sadly, when it comes to the alien parts of the story, which is the overarching area, it is pretty much just boring aliens. You even have a discussion with the AI that's maybe helping you along the way about how the entire plan of the aliens seems incredibly basic and boring. And to be honest, yeah, it is. And while it was an attempt at an inside joke, it's an outside travesty at times. Because when you're not finding Herc's man parts, you're jetting to small numbers of complexes to turn the power back on to give more computing power to the AI. And I'm pretty sure anyone who can understand basic movie plots knows what's going to happen. Go to a tower, get in a fight with enemies, kill enemies, turn power on, rinse, repeat. I mean, even later with queen aliens and flying arachnids the size of politicians' egos, the little gameplay changes that occur are never really enough to get it off its feet. And you know that even after the first encounter with the very first tower. But it's not all bad. In fact, there's a lot of interesting parts. For example, one element is the way you travel around the world. Mars itself is separated into two basic main sections of land you can walk on. One, without alerting the aliens, that's hard rock and packed earth, and sections you can't, like anything loose and sandy areas. And if you touch a boot into the sand, it is go time, which adds this really cool amount of strategy to the game when you're fighting a large number of enemies and having to hot foot it across a dangerous area because you don't want to add to the total number of aliens that want to treat you like a bipedal brood home. There's another kind of section too, but I don't want to ruin it for this review because it easily highlights the game and I think luckily pops up a couple times and the first time it does, you're like, wait, what? When you take this in comparison to Far Cry 5, the gameplay loop of 5 was stunningly simple. Walk outside and let anarchy happen. Women are transforming into mountain lions, planes are spawning inside of helicopters, and two cars that come even remotely near one another have about a 50-50 chance of turning into a Ford Atlas rocket. But for most of Lost on Mars, that fun and that anarchy is actually missing. Another issue is that the game never really reaches out into the idea of being on Mars. Sure, gravity's much looser, and you have a jetpack, which does set up for some sphincter-tightening times, leaping across mysterious alien remnants to get to the top of, yeah, more towers. But that's the difference, because in Far Cry 5, it was about living in a place where every baby didn't have an umbilical cord. They had a friggin' M4 assault rifle pointing out of their belly button, and if they didn't score a perfect headshot on the doctor, they weren't allowed to leave the birth canal. Absolutely none of that is here, and it shows how paper-thin a Far Cry title can actually be 
without that anarchy or without some overarching atmosphere. Ubisoft always seems scared of really having quiet moments in games, so everything is turned to 11 in most of the titles. This is the opposite, with almost everything turned to 1, and it occasionally goes to 5 when you step in some sand. Now, when it comes to the gameplay itself and the gunplay, it's good, standard stuff. But one thing to remember is that most games have ammo that's scattered around the world like a fucking raisinette on a movie theater floor. But in the DLC, it's all about the power of the guns. Everything runs on rechargeable systems. And while you can have four of them switching out as you go, overall, they don't feel impactful. And since the aliens you fight don't drop ammo, there are times in longer battles, especially on the harder difficulty, where you're stuck in this odd world of repetition, where you're making a couple pot shots, switching weapons, taking a couple pot shots, switching weapons, and so forth. It's like throwing friggin' rubber bands at a tank and hoping something's gonna happen. And while that dynamic can be handled in a longer title using a mix of unlock curve combined with connected enemy introduction patterns, here the game just doesn't really have that much time to do so. Now don't get me wrong, there are a couple bones you are thrown. First, you can tear the hump glands out of an alien queen and toss them into a group of bad guys and watch them peck each other to death, which can really help when your guns aren't charged or you have a shotgun and the enemies are too far away to hit them, but you don't want to run across a sandy area and collect more enemies. That's when the DLC is at its finest. Those moments, there's just not a ton of. And of course, speaking of length, the game is about the same length as the Vietnam DLC, which means short. It's a couple hours at the absolute most. Of course, the biggest question is, are those hours filled with fun? And that brings us to fun factor. First, I have to say the humor carries a lot of this game. It is friggin' spot on. Herc and his voice actor relish in finally getting at least a co-star billing. His continual explanation of the chemical used to build items as space jizz is as grody as it sounds. In fact, much of the game is really seen through the narrative eyes of Herc responding to every event occurring on the screen. It is fantastic use of a character, and it shows that the devs of Far Cry know exactly what they're doing in that particular element. In fact, a number of in-jokes from Far Cry 5 show up here, and that's where the DLC is once again doing really well and hitting on all cylinders. There are some serious issues here. DLC usually augments the original title or creates a curve of gameplay that attempts to go outside the original title, either in implementation or presentation. Some are a combination of both. I think that combination is the most dangerous road, and it shows how riding down the center of the road can end your summer fun way too quick. See, Mars tries to augment the fiction with a side story, and without hesitation picks one of the best side characters to the game ever, but it doesn't do much with it. It doesn't elevate or really even reflect the gamer's gameplay expertise by building up what they may have learned in the prior titles. Instead, it plops them down in a world that seems to exist purely to extend the player's time in it. One big example is a large section you're going to lose the use of your jetpack for no other reason than simply because, working to do nothing more than fluff out the game experience prior to that money shot ending. You're left with two gameplay conceits sitting heavily noticeable right next to each other. I had a couple great moments in the game, but even the hilarity of Herc and the occasional oh shit moment as an alien queen decided to treat me like a pinata, it never actually really got going when it comes to fun factor. So you guys know I rate games like this on a DLC scale to get it right away or maybe jump in later or not at all. With this, I have to say later, Herc almost saves it, but the long pedestrian moments where you're just jetpacking around Mars until you find another tower is really too lackadaisical for me to suggest that folks really rush out to get it. Feels like an arcade level from the Far Cry arcade, but blown out to bigger proportions, but without a lot of the fun. The price is excellent, and a lot of folks are going to download it as they consider the season pass they bought a part of the original purchase and not a new one, and I can see that. But for me, I just can't agree with it. So that's it for me. I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Maybe check out Reddit or Twitter, and of course, you can become a patron on the Patreon website. It absolutely helps, especially as every friggin' video I put up gets demonetized or, as of right now, getting copyright struck by a bunch of different bots. It really does help. Peace out. Enjoy the rest of your week.